Greetings, I am Dr. Bernard Markowitz. It's my pleasure to provide a video commentary on a recent manuscript by the Basili brothers regarding chin augmentation using the patient's own fat. Microgenia, generally known as a small or weak chin, is hallmarked by deficiency in chin projection, contour, and at times, symmetry. The standard treatment for this deformity has addressed the underlying cause of the problem, the bone deficit, by either cutting and moving the chin fragment forward or by using different size and shaped plastic implants to augment the deficient structure. More recently, less invasive injection approaches utilizing the patient's own fat as well as other soft tissue fillers have been used for the same purpose. Nevertheless, there are few reports substantiating the success, benefits, or risks of these injectables to enhance the appearance of the chin. The recent work of Drs. Filippi and Antonio Basili have helped define and authenticate the use of fat grafting in treating the small, weak chin. Using fat harvested from the patient's abdomen, they placed it directly into the soft tissue of the chin and achieved measurable improvement in 42 consecutive patients undergoing the procedure. The authors, using three-dimensional photography and software, demonstrated objective evidence of maintained chin projection and fat retention when examined six months after surgery. However, the aesthetic benefits of the procedure were not assessed by the patients or surgeons, nor were they documented by a complete set of photographs. The advantages of chin augmentation using fat are primarily due to the less invasive nature of the procedure and the use of one's own tissue to create a hopefully sustainable outcome. This study demonstrates the innovative application of a relatively innocuous procedure, fat grafting, to address an anatomic deficit at a more superficial level through small, imperceptible skin punctures. This obviates the need for incisions inside the mouth or underneath the chin that are necessary when one moves bone or places an implant. The complications in the study, postoperative erythema or redness, and contour irregularity were infrequent and easily managed. Complications related to bone and implant surgery such as wound breakdown, mandible fracture, tooth injury, lower lip numbness and drooping, implant malposition, asymmetry, and mobility are more serious in nature and commonly require additional intervention to ameliorate. Another benefit of the procedure is its ability to address subtle chin asymmetries and irregularities. The disadvantages of this technique are hypothetical and related to what we don't know about the long-term behavior of transplanted fat. Fat is living tissue and will retain its native characteristics when taken from one place and placed in another. How will the chin appear when the patient ages or gains and loses weight? Will the chin sag, be too large, too small? The authors performed additional fat grafting at 10% of their patient cohort to address irregularity and undercorrection. What options do the authors suggest when the chin is overcorrected or after the patient gains 20 pounds and the chin is too big? In summary, this is a well-performed study using sound surgical principles learned from years of experience with fat grafting. The procedure is well tolerated, less invasive, but not a direct solution to the underlying skeletal problem. A critical, unanswered query remains. Are the results in long-term sequelae of using fat to augment the chin better and less prone to complication than those obtained with bone or implant surgery? Only time and additional well-performed studies will be able to answer these questions. Thank you.